Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Greetings. Uh, so I made a video yesterday about uh, bullies and uh, and it's a pretty good video. I you know I like what I said then, but I it made me think about something else. Another issue that has been in the you know popular culture recently, and that is the the authority of the police. Because I definitely back you know I I'm rooting for the police. We need the police to do a good job. I agree that they need to be well trained, and they need to treat everybody exactly the same. It's, you know, no racism is an evil on the face of the earth, and we, we need to do everything we can to get rid of any any strain of racism because there's racism on all sides. Yeah, or with what's going on these days. But the main thing is, you know, I I don't like bullies of any kind, and uh, but what we need uh, the police to be strong and able to stand up to any bullies and, and protect the people and serve and protect the people. And the, we, should, we should be friendly with the police. You know, I like the whole idea of the community policing and uh, they need to be able to talk to anybody. And, and th this, this is a really important issue because what's going on is these people the police, if a policeman asks you to do something, you, you you have to respect that and answer the question. You know, I mean, this is this principle of the guardians of society are is thousands and thousands of years old. You know, thinking that you know, if somebody's asking you who you are and what you're doing is somehow a violation of your rights is just ridiculous. Any civilization. In, in human history has had guardians that guard the civilization. And, and if they ask you who you are, you, you, you answer the question. You know, in the past, they just killed you. If you didn't answer the question, they didn't like argue with you about it. They just killed you because that was their job. Now we're, we've advanced and, you know, you know, different things and everything like that. And we don't want people killing each other. And, <clears throat> You know, it's kind of like the whole biblical, you know, they used to cut people's thieves. If you're, you know, convicted of uh, stealing three times, they cut your hand off. That way everybody would know you were a thief. Well, you know, and the reason for that is because they lived in tents. And they, you know, and so you couldn't just lock somebody up because, the, you know, tents, you know, you can't lock somebody up in a tent. You know, they just cut their way out. And so... Once they started living in cities and they had brick walls, then they could lock people up. And so instead of cutting your hand off, they would just lock you in a cell and isolate you from society and protect society. That's how they would protect society is by locking you up. And so, you know, that all that criminal defense and law lawyers and and. You know, there's a long tradition of how society is governed and this idea that we should, you know, have a hostile, you know, that attitude of contempt for the police is part of the problem, you know, because policemen are human beings, man. And if you have an attitude of contempt, that, that's an that's an insult. And they're going to, you know, and that's going to, they got human emotions just like everybody else. You know, they're not robots. And... Um, Another thing is, is these group, these people that have been like really extremely hostile towards the United States, and trying, you know, claiming you know they want to destroy the United States, and they you know they don't want to participate in American culture and civilization, and because they think it's corrupt somehow, and then they bitch and complain because they're they're not very successful and I'm going well it's not your race there's not the problem it's your attitude if you run around with an attitude of contempt towards civilization and the police and all the institutions west you know civilization the values of American civilization you're not going to do very well here 
you know, because those are our values and we want, we like those values and we're going to, we're going to enforce those values and protect our society, you know, and we're going to, we have a right to do that. Every civilization has a right to do that. And so, you know, I just wanted to kind of a little bit clarify because I, I, about, because I talked a lot about nobody has a right to tell anybody else what to do. There is an exception to that rule and that is the police do have a right to tell you what to do. And if they abuse that principle, then they should be prosecuted for that. But if the, if the policeman comes up and tell, ask, tells you to do something, you do it. There's no question, if stands or butts about it, there's no excuse for not obeying a police officer. And the main reason for that is because they're on a life and death, you know, emergency battle with, you know, because people get, police officers get shot all the time. So they can't just, they don't have the luxury of, you know, having a debate with you about this. You know, if they ask you to do something, you do it. And they are responsible, you know, the police do have responsibilities that go along with that authority. And we need to enforce that also. And we need to train for that and we need to enforce that. But this idea that, you know, you can just tell the policeman to F off when they ask you to for you know, identify yourself, is that is not acceptable. It's not acceptable, and, you know, 7,000 years ago and with the Celtic clans of Scotland any more than it is in the 21st century or any other time in history. You know, that's a normal part of civilization. And we are going to go protect it all. And I like the United States. I like freedom, equality, and justice for all. It doesn't matter. I don't care about race. You know, I, I do care about, I believe some of the stuff that's going on about sexual, you know, gender issues and all that is just insane. It's crazy. You know, biologically, there's men and women, and that's that's part of biology, and it has been for five billion years on this planet. Life has evolved with male and female, and this idea that you can just wish you were the uh, the opposite is just absurd, and it's disgraceful. You know, I'm not saying we should, anybody should be bothering anybody about your private sexual behavior. I don't really care what you do in in private. But I do care what you do in public and trying to bully people into accepting this bizarre sexual perversity, which is what it is, is, is not accepted. It's just another form of bullying. And, um, and I think our society needs to stand up for family values, the marriage of one man and one woman. And that's, part of human nature it's it, and that and that's going to be this the case forever as long as the human race exists there's going to be the law of marriage is a you know it's a universal human right it's a um, principle it's, it's just a law of, of nature and we need to serve and protect that and we need to you know our society needs to conform to that. We, we can build machines that fly by following the laws of aerodynamics, not, not ignoring them or anything like that. We, we actually learn, we investigate and learn and discover and f figure out, you know, it has to do with speed and, you know, and all that, and the physics of aerodynamics. And we can build machines that fly because we learned how to do that. And it's the same thing, you know, with sexuality. We can't ignore the laws of biology any more than we can ignore the laws of aerodynamics, you know. Uh, so we have to follow those laws. And, and gender is one of the very natural feature of biology of most life forms. Not all. There, there are very few life forms that, you know, like microscopic life forms that are not sexual. You know, they have other ways of procreating and all that so but the main thing i want to talk about is the bullying stopping all forms of bullying 
stopping all forms of prejudice. You should not be prejudiced against anyone. And, uh, and that includes gay people or anything like that. They shouldn't be persecuted or anything. I don't agree with that lifestyle. That's a choice. It's a, that's a voluntary activity. You know, everybody has sexuality and, and you know, and that, that's part of biology. But how you express that instinct is uh, voluntary, you know? And so, because that, that's part of freedom. Freedom, equality, and justice for all. And responsibility and being responsible and accountable for yourself and your personal life and what you do in your personal life, that's private and it should stay that way. And you, nobody has any right to bully anybody because of what they do in private, you know. But, and, and even, you know, as long as they're not trying to force you to accept their way of life, does it, you know, you shouldn't be bothering. You should get along fine with like homosexual people or any people. You should be able to be friendly to any human being and every human being. That's what I say, you know, be kind, friendly, and polite, no matter what anybody else is doing. What they're doing doesn't affect you. If they, if they start trying to bully you, or, or then they have a problem and you have a right to defend yourself. But bullying is a problem. And it doesn't matter whether it's somebody bullying a gay person or, or a gay person bullying somebody that has a different opinion about things. You know, that it's bullying is the problem. You know, it's like one of the things, um, you know, we just got to stop the bullying, you know, and we've all got to figure out ways and means of doing that and teaching little kids that we got to confront it at a very young age because kids have to be taught not to be bullies and they need to be taught in a general way. You can't beat somebody into not being a bully. That just doesn't even make sense. You know, you have to reason with the kids and explain to them about values, family values, moral values, and teach them the values in ways that are not harmful, not radicalize them in, in any way, shape, or form. And you teach them one world unity. You teach them to love and respect each other. You know, don't steal, don't rob, don't kill, don't you know harm anybody. Practice harmlessness in your life. And um, so, you know, I just kind of wanted to add the uh, respect the police idea to the no bullying allowed anywhere on earth no bullies allowed anywhere on earth you know and and, and the whole and the other issue you know between other than the police issue and and how we're going to have security and you know because they have an important role to play in society is police is this whole debate about homosexuality and other kinds of sexuality and gender stuff you know, homosexual, if you, whatever you want to do is your business. And it's none of my business. And I just don't want you, you know, trying to make me agree with it. Because I don't. I think it's harmful. It's a disorder. It's a sexual disorder. You know, obviously. You know, and objectively. And uh, But I also believe that people shouldn't be prosecuted or persecuted in any way or discriminated against be, because of their sexual choices, you know, what they're doing in their private life. And so then, uh, you know, so we got to deal with this, man. The, the most important thing, answer to that idea is family values and teaching people the whole one man and one woman get married and have kids and raise families. And they do that within the context of their larger family. And that is, uh, we need to nurture that. And we need to teach that in school. And we need to protect that in every aspect of society. At work, at play, 
at, you know, in the government, in schools, in every part of society needs to be family friendly. And, uh, you know, so I just wanted to bring up that, you know, and kind of clarify the part about respecting the police. The police have authority that we, because I want a safe place to live. I want to be safe in, in a big city. I want our big cities to be safe, clean, and decent societies where people, you know, women and children can wander around by themselves and not have to worry about being harmed by a bunch of bullies or any kind of bullies. Or anybody has to worry about bullies because it's not just women and children, but it's everybody. And these bullies, and we've got to start teaching that for these little kids when they're little kids in school and teaching people to protect each other. Ubuntu is a wonderful word. It means, uh, you know, friendship with every human being that you interact with and with the whole entire human race all, all together. You know, be friendly, be kind, friendly, and um, polite, you know, and, and, and protect each other, help each other get where we're going, you know, and, and always help be helpful and harmless. Practice being helpful and harmless in every relationship, no matter what anybody else is doing. You know, if somebody else is not doing that, then that's no excuse for you to do it back. You know, you have to be helpful and harmless at all times and under all circumstances. And that's that's each of our responsibility. You know, for in our own lives, is to practice that in our own lives. Helpful and harmless. So, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.